a downside to the Telstra SpaceX operation is now Wi-Fi calling is a little bit problematic. All right, g'day folks. Satellite communication has come such a long way in just the last couple of years. I remember when we first got to the station 10 years ago, we had the equivalent of dial-up. You know, we're around at 512 kilobytes per second on a, on a satellite connection. We had sat phones on the Iridium or Inmarsat network, and they were pretty good. Then we had the NBN come out, so Skymaster NBN, which gave us a good 12 meg per second, and slowly as it's been upgraded over the years, it gave us 25 meg, 50 meg, 70 meg, especially when I dual bonded to connections. It didn't have that great of an upload speed, but what that did enable me to do was create and start leveraging it for our fixed wireless network, which I almost have done because there's always so many other jobs to do on the station. With that, I um, was lucky enough to be nominated for and become a finalist for the Innovate with MBN Awards a couple of years ago, and that, that got me over to Canberra, and it was pretty cool. It's also led me to the speaking at the Ubiquity World Conference in Sydney. So it has um, opened up a lot of opportunities. Then we ended up with SpaceX's Starlink being the low Earth orbit where there's thousands of satellites traveling not that far out of our atmosphere, which gave us very good latencies and very good speeds. That initially was limited to the southern part of Australia, then it slowly moved to the rest of it. And as that's developed, they've gotten faster, faster and better with their technology. So one of the things which you all know I use quite a bit is the Starlink Mini, which is a very good jump from the hack and chop jobs that we were doing on full-size Starlinks. This is just very, very easy. You can get little mounts and the place that I actually use to get most of my mounts and 12 volt accessories for that little Starlink Mini, one of seven that we have across the company, is Camper Van Builders uh, Australia. Um, I will put a link in there and a shout out to them. I don't get any discounts, I, I just keep buying their stuff. Uh, but it's the place that when anyone asks me, what do you use for your Starlink Mini? I send people to them. Now, in amongst all of that, what if you aren't traveling in areas with no connectivity in Australia or around the world? What options do you have? Because that's $80 a month for 50 gig or $15 a month for five gig, which really is pretty good. That's enough for a couple of texts here, there, everywhere, a little bit of data, and you can opt in for more but you've got a hefty hardware price. And continuing on because our two ways do work. And of course, the UHF radios in Australia are great for vehicle to vehicle communication over small areas. And even better when you've got a little bit of altitude. Then you've got VHF radios. So we are back to what if you're not using a Starlink Mini all the time and aren't able to justify the expenditure of that hardware? We also still have our network that the Garmin InReach Mini, which I carry for tracking. It's got an EPIRB, all these sorts of things, but you can also send messages on it. That runs on the Iridium network, which is still going. So that's cool. So we've got that. But recently, Telstra, who aren't renowned for having the best coverage across Australia, including having a $20 million audit done on the claims of coverage, have partnered, almost under duress, with Telstra's SpaceX to enable you to use the low earth uh, ah, 
low earth orbit network to access text messages, text messages only at this stage. So effectively the satellites that are traveling over the top are working like a, a cell phone tower for your phone in space. A little bit like how Taiwan uses a geostationary network of satellites to provide mobile signal down to that country. The only downside to this, having the SpaceX on your phone, we'll get to a few more reasons why it's not so great, is that Telstra have decided that they're only going to enable it on the latest generation of Samsung phones. A few generations from the iPhone 13 forwards can operate on that because they've had emergency satellite texting through Global Star. But Telstra have decided to lock you out into having to have the latest Samsung phone, the S25. I have now got the S25 Edge because it's nice and light, a bit smaller than the S24 I had, and it actually stays in a car mount. It's also a little bit more durable than some of the other phones, given the case and everything. What's disappointing about this is that SpaceX did their initial testing on the direct to cell technology with as early as the Galaxy S21. A few generations earlier, much more affordable around the market. And by locking out to just the latest phone, you are pricing a lot of people out of safety. And I think we should probably put people before profits, especially since Telstra was funded and continues to be funded by the taxpayers, us Australians. Now, we will do a quick message test racing the Iridium network with the SpaceX network. And what I've done is I have Jasmine waiting ready and I'm going to send a message first from the Iridium, the Garmin, through their messenger app with the Time and Garmin. And I will then send a text message from my S25 via SpaceX that Starlink is turned off to Jasmine with the time and that it's from the cell phone. So we better get to it. I'm gonna put this little thing down and maybe not point you towards the sun. All right, so hopefully there's not a whole load of glare. I've now got both of these out and we're in a nice clear area. Hopefully we're not gonna get any multi-pathing or anything from our phone. And I have noticed that occasionally, even in the car, I'll get the SpaceX text messages. So let's get cracking here. So I am sending a message to Jasmine through the inReach. It is 13.35. Garmin. Jasmine's going to respond, and it's sending it to this, connected via Bluetooth, with the time she's received and the comms network that she's received it on. So leave my Garmin over there, and it is still sending and processing. I am opening my phone to normal text messages. Message out, 1336 SpaceX. All right, so it is pending and message out. So that sounds like it was a lot quicker. One of the things that I have found interesting is that I actually can bring up on my ubiquity message in. There we go. So. 1336 Garmin, 1336 Elon. I can see on my 
Wi-Fi analyzer, my network communication uh, signal and everything. So I've got SIM 1, Telstra, and it's showing up as 4G with 114, 113, 110 decibel of signal. I've actually had it where the SpaceX signal has been better than the standard cell phone signal. So when it's transferred from SpaceX signal to a 4G tower or a 5G tower, usually you get 4G first, the SpaceX signal was better and I was able to send text messages. So that's one thing that I've found to be quite interesting. Another few things that I've found interesting with the Telstra SpaceX operation is that very occasionally I do get a sniff of data. Usually it's enough data for me to get a notification saying you may have new WhatsApp messages. But most interestingly, I get the Unify protect notifications of vehicles being detected. I was working at a water point servicing the Wi-Fi and had zero signal at all on the Wi-Fi network. It was powered down. But I was getting the little notification pop up across the top saying vehicle detected at the homestead, which I thought was very curious because that notification is a data type. They never send a text message and it was still coming through. So it's kind of safe to assume that the SpaceX message out and message in was marginally quicker than the Garmin. Because we have got the 1336 in and out. And on the Garmin messages, it was 1335 out, 1336 in. One minute here and there. We might be just operating at a very good level. I hope that's of some use to you if you're trying to decide your emergency comms or backup communications. But we have got a hardware cost on this of upgrading your mobile phone to a Samsung, ah, to a Samsung S25 if you're an Android person. Or if you're an Apple person, lucky you, you've got the last three, four generations. I don't even know what uh, iteration they're up to these days. This unit here, it costs you a few hundred dollars, around 300 odd dollars to get it. And then it's a $50 a month plan for 150 messages, but unlimited check-ins and uh, tracking, which is quite good because that allows people to monitor me in real time. And if I have to, I can hit the emergency button on it, which will go directly to emergency services where the SpaceX and Telstra, you can't text message triple zero here in Australia and you don't have uh, live tracking at this stage. The Garmin also will pair to something like my watch. So I can leave the Garmin either in a pack or somewhere with signal in the vehicle while I'm operating on a tower and I can send a message, hit my EPIRB, all those sorts of things. A downside to the Telstra SpaceX operation is now Wi-Fi calling is a little bit problematic. Even in the car just now with Starlink turned on, with Wi-Fi, with Wi-Fi calling as the preference, my phone is still trying to use the direct to sell for its primary signal. Even at home where we've got the Wi-Fi, no cell signal, and I'm working, my phone, if I'm anywhere that it can see the sky or get a sniff of the Starlink, it will not allow me to do Wi-Fi calling. 
This is extremely frustrating because it will also just send you a message saying you've missed a call. So I've missed a lot of regular phone calls and we generally go on WhatsApp. We've done it for years uh, for our, our Wi-Fi calling, but extremely frustrating that now it seems that with the upgrade, we've lost the ability to do Wi-Fi calling off our vehicles and water points without using something other than the phone's native operations. So that's a major flaw. With Telstra and SpaceX, the direct-to-sell service is included in any postpaid um, cell phone plan. So you can be down at about $50 a month. That's the same price as your Garmin is to operate with a little bit better functionality. One note on that, uh, recently here in Australia and in Western Australia, we had a young person who got bogged in a vehicle, left the vehicle, big mistake. And yeah, there was three or four days that they were searching for her and obviously she had no communications. I don't know what generation phone she had, but she certainly didn't have an iPhone or the S25, which again is sort of saying, if the phone's got the capability, it is a little bit irresponsible to not have it enabled. Uh, yeah, a little disappointing. But then again, she could have been on a prepaid. The outlook for direct to sell technology going into voice calls, uh, MMSs, and then even into data, it is just there. It is just on the horizon. They reckon it's going to be somewhere late next year. I get the feeling it's going to be a little bit earlier. This has the potential to make it that SpaceX will be providing direct services without a local network provider, but it may be down to local laws and compliance like the ACMA saying, no, you can't operate as an independent but they do already with their, their internet, their mobile internet and their fixed internet. So that could be an absolute game changer and shake up in the telco industry. It also means that technologies like our fixed wireless network for our station monitoring could be superseded by direct to cell, direct to satellite communications being a low cost option. We still are happy with our network because what it does give us is whatever goes on up there doesn't affect down here. So you don't have to have the internet on our, uh, on our network, on our platform, to be able to monitor your water points and use the artificial intelligence that's built into our network gear. Which is pretty cool because if anyone starts playing with... Uh, things that go boom in space and the Kessler effect starts to take out more and more satellites, this terrestrial network will continue to work. So thank you very much for joining me on this. I hope that it's been useful and I don't get attacked by a network provider for saying things uh, that are true. But for now, I'm gonna turn my Starlink Mini back on and see if I can call back the person that I missed. Cheers everyone, and stay safe out there. If you get stuck in the outback, stay with your car. Communicate, communicate, communicate.